morning. We are live. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Business Mindset with Shea Boss. I am your host, Angela Middleton, a.k.a. Shea Boss. Today is Thursday, March 11th, 2021. And tonight's topic, look at me. Hi. <laughs> I have amazing photographers and videographers here to discuss what they do and network a little bit and advertise a little bit about themselves. So let me introduce my co-host for tonight. First up, ladies up first, I have Miss Latoya Renee of Latoya Renee Photography. I have Sean Turntine yep. with, <laughs> I had to practice that, <laughs> Turntine <laughs> with Art Trends LLC. And hopefully our third guest will join us and I will introduce him when he shows up. So let me bring on my co-host. <laughs> hey, hi guys. Hey. How are you? Let me, let, me put some, let me put some names up here. There we go. So we'll know who everyone is. Miss Latoya Renee, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. You know, I am always blessed and highly favored. <laughs> Mr. Absolutely. Sean Turntine, how are you? I'm doing good. How about y'all? Wonderful, Great. wonderful. I want to thank you. Okay, I'm not getting my video right. Okay, thank you both for agreeing to join me. I had um, minor relationships with, <laughs> with both of you, um, but... I really enjoyed your work. So I did have, okay, we need to turn the volume down just a little bit. Um, I had photos taken by both of these uh, photographers. So, and I love the work and I wanted to definitely um, showcase who you are and what you do and talk a little bit about you getting into the industry, um, how it's working for you, how did COVID change, if if any? Um, so just just talk about what what you do, how you do it, when you do it, and share with one another. Then we're going to you know hopefully network with other people. Again, I've used their services, both of them phenomenal, very professional. So now we're going to get a little deeper about who they are and why they they got into photography. So, Miss Latoya, let's yes. start with you first. I always ask um, typical questions. So, okay. my questions are: When and what drove you into the business of photography? Um, okay. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have an hour, so. <laughs> So um, I'll, I'll try to be brief then. <laughs> um, I have been doing photography for about 10 years now. And um, uh, I have always been passionate about art um, ever since high school. It just, just I was an illustrator. I drew everything. I painted. I, I just art, art, art. I loved art. And um, I was actually um, getting into fashion illustration <clears throat> before I graduated high school. And I had attempted to uh, move to uh, Atlanta to go to school for fashion. And that did not work out. <laughs> so okay. um, I ended up um, going to school for just business management and um, and things took a turn and uh, and life happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up starting a family not long after that. So um, moving ahead, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when my first son was born, he um, I just I wanted to capture everything. Uh, I wanted to take pictures of every little moment. And so um, so back then. <laughs> I feel so old, but um, we were still 
using disposable cameras. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and dropping them in the bag at CVS. <laughs> <laughs> and wait. And all of that. And so I was like, that's not enough. So my um my right. uh, my husband he ended up, up getting yep. me a camera, a, a small Nikon digital camera for Christmas. And I wore that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> and I just discovered that I loved it so much. And then I just started looking into it. And um, and he really pushed me. He's like, you know, are you, cause I was talking about going back to school and I really just, just took a liking to it. I started love it. I started researching more about it, how to get better at it. And I went to school for it. So I ended up going back to college and um, I got um, my associates in photography and I worked my butt off and I just, I loved it. After that, I really wanted to, um, and at the time, uh, God bless me where I was able to stay home with my children and um, I was able to commit to it. And I really wanted to make something of it um, for myself. You know, I really had a personal ambition to um, to make a career path. And so I really had some great support. And after that, <laughs> I was like, well, how can I really make this thing legit? And um, little by little, I, I was educated on it. And um, back in 2012, I, I um, put into get my name recognized. And it took me some time to figure out what that name was going to be. Mm. Um, and as, as many know, you, you have all this, these glamorous, you know, photography companies with these name, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, golden hour photography or, you know, whatever. And I was just like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. I want it to be me. I want it right. to be me. And um, I started to think about my mother, <laughs> Who calls called me Latoya Renee every time I was I would say being myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, when, when you know when she would call me by my first name when it was okay. When I would step over the line and and and, and do some extra things, it was Latoya Renee, and I was like, you know what? That's when I was being myself the most. <laughs> right. So um so that just really stuck. It felt good to to use my name to 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 make it uh, a part of who I am. And, um, and I just, you know, I, I took some, I took time building it, um, as a business. And, um, as my family grew, I had to pause and then I was like, you know what, <clears throat> I'll get back into it when, when, uh, when the dust settles. Mm-hmm. And so as of this pandemic, which we'll get into the dust settled, and here I am again with a relaunch as of 2021. So, nice. And relaunch yes. it was. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Yes. Sean. What is your story? When did you get started? How did, why did you get started? <laughs> and so, tell us about your arts trends name. How did you come up with that? Oh, yeah. I can definitely give all the above. Uh, first of all, uh, I started out not really caring too much for uh photography mm. uh it, it's not that i didn't like it it's just that i my heart was drawn more to uh doing uh, uh drawing like I, I used to draw uh growing up and i thought that's what i was going to end up doing in life but um as teachers continued to tell me like oh well artists don't really make money you really have to hone in on like a different uh a different uh, career path uh, if you want to take care of your family or if you want to do things and be successful in life you might want to try other things and let that be like a side gig or something like you know I guess you you get money on the side with it uh, mm-hmm. so I believed it uh, all the way up until I went to uh, college I went to Art Institute of Washington okay. uh, that's where I got my first kit my first graphic design kit because I started off with graphic design uh, I knew that you can't really make a lot of money. Well, at least I was told you can't make a lot of money drawing. So, of course, I believed it. I bid on it. And I said, you know what? Well, let me try graphics because that's a growing need, especially uh, as I was graduating high school. So I went to school for uh, graphic design. Inside of my kit, they gave me a camera. 
Wow. It wasn't a fancy camera. It was just a, a regular uh, a Nikon. It was a Nikon. It was a point and shoot. Uh, I mm-hmm. think the zoom was like 10, 10 times on it or something like that. <laughs> Man, just just like you, Latoya, I, I, I wore that camera out. Like I, I went down. I, at the time, I lived with my mom downtown D.C. in Adams Morgan. And mm. uh, I used to go around jogging and taking pictures of like, you know, I started out with street photography. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife, when I met my wife, is kind of like when all of this started coming around that I could have this as a profession. So she had an internship. And while I was working security for the Capitol Hilton, uh, she actually had an internship where they needed uh, photography services. And of course, I was doing it for free. I was just, I guess I was doing it whenever they needed me mm-hmm. and I didn't charge anything. So from that, uh, I actually got a wedding. And I think that wedding we charged like me and my wife charged like $50 or something like that. It was something wow. really cheap. Yeah. Uh, I was so scared to mess up, but we did decent. I mean, it wasn't like to the standard of art trends now, mm-hmm. but at the same time, we put our best foot forward, uh, kind of enjoyed it, kind of enjoyed talking to people, uh, getting to learn people throughout the day. And uh, it, it kind of kicked off from there. But then once uh, I went back to working full time, you know, with my security job, which I, you know, continued to work uh, in 20. 20- 12 we got married uh and that wasn't what i was trying to remember i know we got married 2012 so don't <laughs> <laughs> thank you for clarifying that <laughs> yeah, so, so my, my my thinking was uh when i actually was diagnosed with blood clots mm. uh, i was in a hospital for three months uh basically immobile couldn't really get around it was hard you know trying to pay pay rent at the time we had our first apartment so you think I just got married like a few months into our marriage. I have blood clots. Um, I start second guessing myself when I went back to work in security. I was like, OK, physically uh, it was taking a toll on me, especially coming back. And I needed to work. And there was no such thing as light duty uh, for where I worked at. So when I did go back to work, um, I used to do little things for people like, you know, put my graphic design to to work. You know, I. I was doing, I was taking old pictures, uh, refurbishing them. Uh, I was taking pictures and making it slideshows and putting it together for people that I used to work with. Of course, I was doing it for money, but um, it was a passion of mine. Uh, I ended up quitting my security job to go into IT because, of course, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I need to get into a field where basically I'm going to be able to thrive. I'm going to be able to take care of a family because now I have a wife. And uh, IT is not as taxing on your body as security. Uh, So I was like, let me give it a shot. I ended up working for a patent and trademarks office. Uh, I I worked for a few for a few contractors. Uh, But then I was I started second guessing that I was like everything kept drawing back to photography. So Mm -hmm. I would take like my off days and I would shoot. I would you know, I would full on take on shooting. And uh, when I quit the security job, uh, one of the contracts fell through, uh, so I was jobless. With the money from the severance package that I got from security, I actually used that money to start the LLC. And now we're getting into the photography store. Uh, <laughs> I start thinking more about what type of photographer would I be. I didn't want to be a wedding photographer because I felt like it was too much pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh but I was just so lost. I was like, I don't know where to start. So I tried shooting just a little bit of everything. Uh, what I end up landing with was uh, weddings because it, first of all, it yields you basically it replaced my income. It, it helped me replace my income, but also in wedding photography, you have a little bit of everything. You have uh, product photography because you obviously you're taking detail shots. Uh, you have portrait photography because before the wedding start and afterwards, uh, you're getting good shots of like the bride and groom individually. Um, you have uh, family photo shoots within that. You have uh, photojournalistic uh, style because you're shooting the whole day, basically. So, I mean, it, it's a great point. It's just like a mosh pot of things that you're doing in a day. Uh, that actually focus on different things. So yes, I shoot weddings, but I also do product photography. Uh, 
I take pictures for uh, for a chef. Uh, you know, I I, I kind of like moved around, so I didn't. I, I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to be put in the box. Um, and now here I am. I mean, I how the pandemic kind of like changed things up for me was, you know, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, all of my big weddings, they turn into micro weddings. Uh, all of my big weddings got shifted from uh, 2020 or yeah, 2020 to 2021. Some still being moved to 2022. So uh, it's kind of like a wait and see thing. Okay, so, okay, so talk, talk about, about, talk about art, art trends. trends. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So art trends, uh, <laughs> I started out as Sean Tarantine photography. Mm -hmm. uh, I like it. Me personally, I like it because it identifies who I am. Uh, but then I was thinking about, man, people are going to have a tough time pronouncing my last name. So, I have to say I had to practice. <laughs> you trust me. I, I, did, I didn't want to mess it up if on, I stuck, on live. If I stuck with it, I think everybody would have had a problem with it. Even if it reached a level where everybody, even in high school, of course, people got it right. Uh, being around me for a certain amount of time, but I'm thinking about okay, new clients coming in, they not going, they going to butcher my name. So I was like, you know what? Let me just change it. Uh, so me and my wife, we start thinking about some some names that we could choose from. And what I landed on was art trends. Uh, how I got art? I went to Art Institute of Washington, so I borrowed art from Art uh, Institute, mm -hmm. and then trends is. I never want to be stuck in one place. I always want to be trending upward. So uh, yeah. my style will never stay the same. I always look to elevate. And uh, I do want my work to be recognizable. I want people to be able to look at my work and say, oh, my man Sean did that. Or, yeah. you know, Tarantine. A lot of I, I was I played football in high school. So a lot of people uh, call me Tarantine. So I'll get a lot of people. Oh, that's Tarantine's work. So, you know, for for me, it's. It was just a way of connecting uh, something that didn't have my name on it mm -hmm. so that the work could be glorified and not Sean the person. Uh, not to say I, I'm against people using their name for their photography companies, but Tarantine, I, I mean, even though I would have loved for my last name to get out there in a good way, uh, <laughs> people wasn't going <laughs> to get it right. <laughs> and you know what? It's, it's not too late. We still can. Because we know the name of the Apple guy. We know the name of, you know, the Gucci guy. We know the name of McDonald's. I mean, you still know those names. Once Art Trends is out there, it's already out there. But once it gets gets out there, then absolutely. They're going to, oh, that's turn time. Like, like I, 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 it rolls off my tongue now. <laughs> it's turn time. It's turn time work. But I, I heard something um, that both of you said that, you know, it was a photography giggle. Like, <laughs> my first camera was a Nikon, and it was like something like 10 something, something. <laughs> And both of you giggle like, I don't know what they talk about. <laughs> what What is that? Can you explain what that was? Like, why is that a low class kind of camera? <laughs> so it's not the It's not the brand. It's the point and shoot. Um, okay. it, yeah. it, it doesn't. It doesn't do much. It's not much different than a disposable camera. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, they have improved over the years. Yeah. I'll give you that. The point and shoots have come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it basically, it just doesn't lend you to um, many options when you're trying to have a certain uh, quality in your in your portrait. So yeah, it's so basically a starter camera. So yeah. okay. yes, I had that same cool pics 10 time or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if you had cool pics, but that's what I, I still have I had, it. I, cool and I have it in my case with my other. Oh. <laughs> it's yeah, my, just, oh, you're my number one. <laughs> And see, I, I think that's what it was. I think it was uh, the point and shoot joke. I, I guess every, yeah. not everybody start off like that. I actually started off medium format in um in high school, uh, where you actually had to develop the film. I uh, did that in college. But I, did, I never, so. I, I never personally own one. I do own one now, but I, you know, I, I use it for decoration for my office. <laughs> You know, uh, so the point and shoot was the joke. It wasn't the Nikon because I shoot no, with Nikon right. and I shoot with Sony now. So it, it's not it's not a Nikon joke. It's more so yes. shoot. 
uh, when you think of point and shoot, you think of starter camera. You're thinking about ninety nine dollars. So um, ninety nine dollars won't even buy you a battery for the cameras. <laughs> right. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so talk a little bit about that, Sean. Talk a little bit about like the your startup costs. Like when you <clears throat> when you went legitimate, when you put Sean Turntine out there, when you put art trends out there and you started purchasing, like what did how much was that? What what did you get? It wasn't much. Uh I ended okay. up buying a camera. Uh I out I will note uh, note that I was not uh, a professional professional photographer. I've been shooting for eleven years. Uh, professionally, I've been shooting for seven. So, uh, even though I was shooting, I didn't have all of the knowledge that I needed. And Latoya, I, uh, Latoya, I think you could probably vouch for this. Uh, you continue to learn. It's everything is like learning on the go. So, uh, especially when you're learning first. <laughs> Uh, a lot of people don't want to share their information of what made them uh, successful as a photographer. Yeah. Uh, so you find yourself leaning on stuff like YouTube, mm. books, mm. researching the stuff yourself because you get so tired of hearing that, oh, yeah, we, we could link up. We could definitely link up. But no one is time to link up. It's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, but. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so so i mean when you self-taught it i mean it's literally like you learning on the job so my startup cost to answer your question was about 300 something dollars okay uh, i bought uh still an entry-level camera but my entry-level camera could do this and this is what point and shoots can't do ah okay so you're changing lenses Yep. Yeah. Did I get it right? Oh, yep. she's I mean, a toy. All right. All right. <laughs> you taught me stuff. Come on. <laughs> you got Why am I like super proud of myself? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look, that's the thing. You you just got a degree it off is. of that. That's right. When that's I right. tell you when I did my first photo shoot with Miss Latoya. <laughs> I felt like I was in school because she was so knowledgeable and I kept asking questions and she was just so patient and so professional. Well, let me explain what this is. And you see this and you see that, you see how your face was like, oh, I feel like I can do this. No, I can't. That's, and that's okay. But you know, that's, that's actually a part of my, um, you know, a part of what I do, I I, I, I think, um, and I, I put it on my website, I think most people are uncomfortable in front mm -hmm. of the camera. Mm -hmm. And you need a coach, you need a cheerleader, you need someone to tell you why you're doing these things. And, right. and if it feels weird, it's, it's going to look good, you know. <laughs> You need someone telling you what to do because we're so naturally self-conscious. Um, we, we, you know, just as people, we're so overly concerned about what we look like and we think too much about our flaws and, and all of that. And so um, it's really important to me to uplift my clients, to make them, you know, remind them of how beautiful they are or how handsome they are and just, you know, just and, and settle in to the fact that, you know, you're you're awesome just the way you are. Mm -hmm. And right now, let, just let me photograph your awesomeness. Right. <laughs> and let me walk you through this and I'll hold your hand and I'll show you exactly what, you know, how we're together going to make this a really great experience. So it's important that photographers take time. And, and I'm sure, <clears throat> I'm sure you had a lot of conversations, you know, when you're doing weddings, it's, you're talking a whole lot uh, to different people and, you know, probably hit get bombarded with well why are you doing this and why you gotta move this here and why can't you just do this you know mm -hmm. <laughs> you just have to explain the process you know as best you can to make people feel comfortable when and, you and with you latoya you know i told you from the beginning i was like i'm just gonna listen to everything you do or you tell me to do because this is my first official photo shoot but mm -hmm. i remember when i met sean you know, I did the same thing. I didn't tell him. And I was like, he said, just stand right there. Move this. I was like, okay. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm just following directions. But I'm sure everybody isn't as um, amenable 
to your instructions. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have to do a lot of coaching, as you said. Yeah, I, I, if I may. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, yes, RF is a personable sport. <laughs> it's mm. something that you have to go into with your own personality. And mm -hmm. in your case, uh, when I'm shooting weddings, uh, so I'm I'm introverted. Uh, many wouldn't know that, but when it comes time to when it comes game time, like I do, flip a switch. Uh, and your confidence shows when you're at events. It shows when you're doing uh, individual photo shoots. It, that's when your personality could really shine. Uh, and I feel like your direction is important because if you mm -hmm. picture if I'm looking at the back of my camera and I'm, you know, I always look nervous. What's that going to do for the person that's on the other side of the camera? So your confidence say a lot about where you're going to be as a photographer because, well, not necessarily with everything, because with sports photography, obviously you're doing candid. You're doing um, yes. for basketball, for any type of sports, you're you're actually capturing action versus directing. Uh, but when it comes to what Latoya do or what I do, um, it's a lot of direction that comes forth, but you have to know what you're talking about, too. So uh, really you showing your confidence would set the other person at ease. And I always try to throw like little jokes in there. And, you know, uh, whenever people say, uh, oh, I'm not good at taking pictures, I always say, well, that's why I'm taking the pictures. I'm terrible <laughs> at the other side of the camera. You know, you you constantly try to create yes. a dialogue where, you know, you, yes. you loosen them up a little bit and let them know that, okay, even though you're on that side of the camera, uh, your smile is beautiful. You're beautiful. A lot of people mm -hmm. struggle with self-image. But yeah. you know, I, I try not to even let people see the picture on the back of the camera because when they see it and it's fully edited, they're going to be like, wow, is that me? Yes. Yes. I, I, I mean, I can't agree more. I can't agree more. And I, and I you know, you have to. Um, th that's why I emphasize this. It's about the experience. You know, you putting yourself out there and I and I flip a switch too. I, I would say, you know, I. I feel like when I talk to people in general, I try to I have learned to be more open, more transparent um, and um, how and I agree with you, Sean, how you feel about yourself um, just helps the other person. So this is definitely a I hate to say it, you know, in this way, because I feel like it dumbs it down. But um, customer service friendly business where you just really have to relate to people um, in order for you to be successful. You have to be able to uh, step out of your own comfort zone if you're introverted. You have to flip the switch if you can. You have to, you know, become Sasha Fierce or <laughs> whatever uh, <laughs> alias you take on because you have to be able to connect to people. And for those photographers who don't, I don't think they value the importance of what this really is. You know, sometimes they, there's, too overly concerned with their Im their image, their reputation, their product, or what they're putting out there, rather than making a connection with people. And through photography, it's an opportunity to connect with people, and you're just letting them shine. You're you're giving them uh, something that they can value, they can look at and remind themselves of how awesome that they are, how wonderful they are, how beautiful they are. Mm -hmm. And you want all of that that's you know on the inside, that positive, to come out through the through the image. So as, as best you can, you have to lift their spirits. You have to build their self-esteem all while trying to get good photographs because oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to do your job at the end oh, yeah. of the day. Big time. Big yes. time. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Oh, Latoya, ask, answer the question. Um, what was your startup cost? Like, what did you, what did you feel that you needed to get for those that are interested in photography? What did you get? How much was that for you? When I first started out, I got one of the lower level DSLRs. And um, I believe I got a, one of the entry Canon kits was about, I'll say three or four hundred. Okay. And um, and then you 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 know, as you go along, you probably get an extra battery and then you start, you know, 
get some mo get a flash you know that's a couple hundred dollars some modifiers some reflectors and you learn how to put that in and then you get you some light stands and eventually you might spend i would say upwards about seven or eight hundred dollars just to start and make you feel like oh yeah i can do this you know <laughs> I I, I, I I can look professional, you know. Um, <laughs> but when you um, when you uh, for me uh, after I realized that um, my camera uh, now I, I'll tell you this there there are two um, how do I say uh, the word is escaping me right now. I would just say perspectives on this. So, okay. so, but I believe in both. On one hand, you don't need the best equipment to be a great photographer. You don't need the latest equipment. You don't need the most expensive equipment to be the best photographer. You just need to learn uh, to work with what you have to perfect it. To, to because there's so much more to photography than just you know, taking a snapshot. So you have to be able to understand what you're working with as well as other things like angles and lighting and all of that. But later on, I, um, I did upgrade my camera and, um, and I, you know, I still don't have what I really want. But <laughs> so I'll get there. Um, but you you might end up spending once if you're upgrading, you might end up spending about a thousand dollars, I would say. So so it's an investment. Absolutely. It's, it's an investment. You you know, depending on what you're getting, it, it, and it can go upwards. Now, now that you're in DSLR land, I mean, you're not just talking about the body. You're, you're talking about different lenses you know I, I, sean probably has about three four five lenses over there <laughs> i got seven wow <laughs> well wedding photography is so, it, it, it just depends on what you need it yeah yeah i mean you end up collecting them as you go and realizing that you don't want to be limited in what you can do uh, you realize that these lenses can um you know they're certain lenses are great for certain types of shots that you want. And so, um, so I'm still collecting. I don't have as many as Sean, but, <laughs> yeah, but I have about, I have about four. So, so yeah. So, so the, the I mean, those, those cost, add to the cost. They are not cheap. Let me tell you. They are okay. Not cheap. The, so okay. are you referring to the cameras themselves or the lenses? The lenses. The lenses. Okay. Yes. Lenses cost money. So <laughs> once you invest in the body, if you want good lenses and um yeah, so I'll say they have cheap to expensive based on quality as well. So mm -hmm. if you wanna you can get a starter DSLR for a few hundred, then you can get you maybe a little 50 for a hundred bucks. So you don't have to spend much to get started. Okay. But then if you, if you want, uh, you know, the 50 that can do 1.4 or something like that, then, oh, well, that's different language, but then you're going to be spending about five or $600 per lens. So, okay. you know, it just depends. And, and you always have to invest in your business, like whatever yes. industry, whatever business you have, it, there is some startup costs. And that's why I asked the question. You have to know that every business, you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in the business, but you can grow, right? Both of you, I heard started, I got the cheapest thing. You know, we, we we weren't blessed to say, Daddy, can I be a photographer? And, you know, can you buy me the best camera on the market? You know, all of us weren't born that way. So we had to, to start baby steps and grow. And that's okay. Yes, right? absolutely. Okay. No matter where. I mean, you just as you know, you start somewhere and, mm -hmm. and you, you crawl before you walk, you know, um, and that's just the way it is. You, you don't despise small beginnings, you know, as the Bible mm -hmm. says. So you, you have to be OK with where you're at, but have a mind to grow. Just have a mind to grow and have ambition. Do the work to grow. So, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. That's Angela, awesome. What do, you, what do you like to do? What's, what's something that you like to buy, purchase? Um, food, 
Okay. <laughs> I like to eat. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a plot twist to what I'm asking you. Uh, easily, it could become one of the more more addicting things once you get into pornography. Uh, once you see one thing, mm-hmm. you automatically tell yourself that you need something else. Mm-hmm. So, so what uh, what I want to tell your viewers is, if you do want to get into photography, don't get pigeonholed in. I have to have the latest and greatest because I got away with that uh, entry level camera for about four years uh, before I even upgraded. Now, uh, God has blessed me to get all of you know the cameras of my need. Of course, cameras are still coming out, so it's always like a constant thing. Like I feel like I need to upgrade, but you know, when you look at your photos and you <laughs> say to yourself, "Okay, I've gotten the best out of this camera. It's time to move on." Then I think it's time for you to move on. For, you know, if you continue to grow and you haven't gotten the best out of what you have, then I say stick with what you have until you're ready to upgrade. That's a, That's good a great point. point. Oh my great gosh. Point. Yes. So, Sean, can you talk a little bit about um, you also shared that you are a videographer? Oh, yeah. As well. What's what's the difference? I mean, I, I know I'm I'm being very elementary here, but for those that don't know, what is the difference between being a photographer and a videographer? A uh, videographer is more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just, just just being honest, uh, because these cameras that we use nowadays, and I'll I'll show another one. This is the same one. This, you know, is Sony Sony products, you know, they are good, but you have to buy things like filters if you want to get. OK, into hold it. on. Show that one more time. I didn't quite see it in this in that view. OK. Yeah. So um, the reason that I showed them is because these are my photography cameras. I use them for photography, but they okay. also the reason that I got into Sony is because they're a really good brand for hybrid shooting. Uh, for photography and for video. Uh, it's a lot more things that you need for video. Uh, but, you know, just to take everybody to school for a quick second and, you know, it, about uh, photography. Photography is based on light. So uh, when I teach my classes, because I am an instructor as well, I do private. Uh, Pause. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, yeah. I'm an instructor. Instructor of photography. Shut the front door. Okay, yeah, continue. Yeah. So, so, so I teach people even about using camera phones. Uh, uh-huh. uh, you really, photography is all about light. Uh, if you can manipulate light, then you know photography. So you could. That's why everybody see these camera phones coming out with like all of these daggone cameras on the back, and you, you know. Uh, that now they're starting to be so limitless with, uh, with you. there we go. All, <laughs> all of us. Y'all got y'all shotguns on, on deck. <laughs> so, all of us ready. So, so basically what, what camera phones are uh, or what they can do is that they can per- perform really great in daylight. Uh, okay. And most wedding photographers, if you ever see, any pictures of brides, you would always see at least one shot by the window. You do. Because you they do. don't have to they don't have to use a modifier. They don't have to use anything. Window light is the best light. So if you want your anybody watching, if you want uh-huh. the best light for your selfies, go by a window and take a selfie and then hit me up. And that, and that's what I heard. Like sunlight is the best filter or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, no, window light is the best because well, okay. So explain the, the difference. Yes. Uh, because it, it has a layer of diffusion. Um, most windows nowadays uh, come prepared with UV filters. Uh, you know, so you're not getting the harsh light from the sun. It's hitting a diffusion layer first, mm-hmm. and then it's coming into the subject. So it's, oh. so, much better, it's so much better to be by a window when it comes to photography than to be outside with that same light hitting you from a direction. So is that why car shots are so cute? Well, uh, no, because you're yeah, you're taking much. it inside the car. Well, inside the car, you're seeing filtering it. Filtering the light. Yep. Okay, it, it, go ahead, inside, explain. Inside. No, no, it's, you, you're actually right. Uh, okay. You have that diffusion of light coming through the front window, mm-hmm. and then you're also sitting in shade. Oh. Whenever you, uh, photography is all about diffusing light so you can make your skin look the softest. 
Right. No one, have you ever took a picture in the sun with the sun directly in your face? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. You see all your pores. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when mm-hmm. you stand under the tree, you get that nice yeah. light, soft light in your face. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. photography is all about light. It, it has nothing okay. to do with uh, equipment. It even though. Uh, equipment will enhance the experience. Mm-hmm. It's not going to make you the better photographer. You understanding photography is going to make you the better photographer. I, I know me personally, I could take shots on my phone and go against somebody that have the best of the best camera and still get a better shot. Mm-hmm. Not to say I'm the best photographer. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that because I understand photography, when you get into a certain position, you could give a, a novice the best camera, and you can even set it on automatic, and they won't know what to do with it. Right. No photography. I could take the point and shoot that I started out with and get some amazing shots. Just like a lot of these kids out here, just with their camera phones, Mm -hmm. you know, they're taking amazing shots. They're making videos. They're Mm -hmm. making like movies just with their Phone, like the same phone I have. I'm yeah. like, I can't even put on a filter right. Yeah. But I'm yeah. so glad I heard you say you are an instructor. Yeah. Of photography. So I will definitely um take that course because being <laughs> the businesswoman that I am, a shore mm-hmm. business office services, mm-hmm. I know it's important to, you know, take shots and um advertise yourself, market yourself. So I've been trying to do that. Hence why I um, reached out to Miss Latoya Renee photography. Cause mm-hmm. I figured, cause I seen everyone else do it. Not that I thought I needed to do it, but because everybody else was doing it, I was like, Oh, I guess I got to take some pictures of myself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I hired Miss Latoya photography um, to do that. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> I want to also, you know, just want to take candid things, mm-hmm. you know, that's not really that professional and posters, you know, just make little, little things that I want to do just out of a whim. I'm walking. Oh, this is a nice background. Let yeah. me take a quick shot and, so, and make it, make it look good. Can, can I leave you with something? Please. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll make this short. Uh, if you put one thing, let's say you put this right here. Okay. The hand in the middle, and then you have the screen in between. If you focus on the hand, mm-hmm. it's creating depth in the shot. So let's say you're taking a picture and you have uh you have you actually have uh portrait mode on your phone. So let's say you 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 going out with uh some friends or you going out with uh some family and you want to take a picture. But you don't want the background to be the distraction. Right. Look that thing in the portrait mode, put something to separate you from the background. And if it's just in because Latoya is a, a a portrait photographer, she knows that anything that's blurred in the background becomes, you know, non-distractive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not going to distract your shot as much. So you flip that thing in the uh, portrait mode, you put yourself in between uh, the distance of or Make sure that you have a good distance between yourself and whatever you don't want to be really emphasized in the background at a good distance. And boom, you got your shot. Okay. And that's the one thing I did learn was the photo, the, the photo option. I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. And then I started <laughs> going to black and white and Noro and all of that. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take the class first. I'm gonna take the <laughs> turn scene class first, and then I'm, I'm gonna make some moves. Definitely make some moves. No. So, okay, I, hold I just on one second. One second. Oh, sure, um, sure. I wanted to welcome and thank our live listeners. So thank you so much for joining us on Business Mindset with Shea Boss this Thursday with the topic "Look at Me." We are talking once again to Miss Latoya Conward of LatoyaRenee.com and Sean Turrentine, yeah, um, ArtTrendsLLC.com. So let me really quick, I want to share um, 
their websites because I just learned how to do this. So I'm going to do it. This is arttrends.com, arttrendsllc.com, excuse me. And then we have Miss Latoya Renee, oh, who just is. launched that her is. website. And when I tell you, okay, let me let me pause on this for a second. Miss Latoya Renee just became live for her website, and she told me she texted me, was like, "Hey, I just did it. I went live." I was like, "Bad! Wow! Great! Congratulations!" So I went to my phone and. You know, I'm looking at it. I was like, wait a minute. I need to get this in a bigger shot. I need to get into my laptop. I need to see all of this glory, glorious. So I went to my laptop and I was like, girl, you better do it. And then I started reading. Ooh, like, who is her? Um, and then I started reading. I was like, wait a minute. I, I have to get comfortable. I need some wine. Because this, I mean, honestly, Toya, when I tell you, I went to your website. I felt like I was in a picture book. Like your way oh, with words uh, is amazing. I hope, I pray that you have the vision to really get into storytelling and, mm -hmm. you know, get to writing because your way with words are phenomenal. Okay. Second point, I read your, um, your page. You know, when mm. you were advertising today, tonight, and yes. you were speaking words to me, and I thank you so much. And I'm reading, I was like, is she, is she talking about me? <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Because just, I mean, just your way with words is just, wow. it's just, just phenomenal. So I, I hope I can just put that in your spirit. And, um, you know, I, I, I just need you to write something. And it's going to be awesome because you're a photographer. So it'll be a picture book. <laughs> we'll make it even more amazing. Uh, okay. So, so stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I have to tell you. All right. I know this is about photography, but honestly, I am like going crazy because that is one of my, my one of my other passions is writing. Wow. I, and I and I told my husband that's one of the things that I want to do eventually is bring the two together. I mm. really do. I really do mm. want to bring so story, writing. So Storytelling is in your is in your DNA. It's in your DNA. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Because we I started did, off with one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> we did a project together um last summer. And um she, you know, picked me out. She was like, Hey, I want you to I want you to do this, you know, with me. And that kind of, you know, propelled me, honestly, to Latoya, that, that kind of propelled me into a short business office services because it's like, you know, oh, people wow. just keep coming to me and asking me to be a part of things. And you mm -hmm. didn't know what I did. You didn't know, you know, what my history was. But if you, you know, project this aura about you, you know, God will direct people to you to bring the best out of you. And um, we did that project together and she sent me the beautifulest little thank you package and card. And I was like, oh, I want to put that in a frame and put it up on my wall because it's just, again, you have a way with words. It's just phenomenal. So I hope, yes, that you will venture into that realm as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, somewhere, somewhere in the future. Somewhere, sometime, <laughs> it's going to happen. So, and and you're going to see it time. first, people. You're going to be like, oh, she did tell us that on March 11, 2021. <laughs> I'm here to tell you. <laughs> and I'm going to give you so much credit for it. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed your slideshow. I, I, oh, I, thank I you so much, Sean. That was dope. And I snuck, look, I snuck onto your page earlier today, and I was like, you oh, sneak. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we all got to sneak here. Ah. We all got to sneak here. This is what we're doing, and this is the whole point, right? The whole yeah. point of what I'm doing here is for us to network, is for us to share you know, for us to learn from one another. So this, I mean, this is phenomenal um, about what you guys are doing. So let me um, 
Yes, he will set people in your path to bring the best out of you. He being mm -hmm. the Lord, not Savior. Uh, it's happened to me every day. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And yes, 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 she most definitely does. That that's Mr. Conward. That you know, yes. got to give his shots out. Hey, yes. Derek. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, live, if you are out there, just give us a hit so we can see who you are. If you have any questions about photography and videography, um, let's ask. Let's ask now if you're interested in. Um, becoming a photographer or videographer. This is your time to, these are educated, not just passion oriented, but it is passion and gift and educated. So that is great. Let me see, what did Mr. Conworth say? But I'm the one who told her to find a way to mix her photography with her writing. Okay, we're going to give you your shout out uh -huh. to Derek Kai. <laughs> we know this, this, this Women's History Month, but put your hands up there. Right, I right. Like, when, I, when I write, honey, I'm going to make sure you got a full page all to yourself of my thing. <laughs> giving them all the credit. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, hub, hub, hubby made it happen. It wouldn't yes, happen without he hubby. He really okay, did. so our first class, our first question rather, comes from Mr. Akiva McClam. You, I'm sure you know him, um, Sean, right? Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Any virtual classes? So oh, you huge, mentioned huge. that you uh, were an in, uh, instructor. Yeah, I have to move with the time, so definitely do in uh, uh, virtual classes. Uh, you know, and I, I'm pretty hands on, even though it's virtual. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, so we use our phones. Uh, I, I have materials to make that happen. Good, good. Actually, okay, so both, actually, with both video and um, photography, now I will say I've been in photography much longer than I have been with video, but okay. uh, I feel like I've been in video long enough to kind of like give a couple of nuggets. So, when you're when you're teaching classes, do you do the whole spectrum um, to phone? instruction, photo instruction, mm -hmm. video instruction, or are your classes segregated to just phone? This class is no. photography. It's, this it's class is video. It's structured uh, from where you start. Uh, if okay. you already have a basic knowledge of photography mm -hmm. and you just want more information, you might get more than the person that's beginning. I see. Because because I it, trust me, I don't hold back from anything. Uh, I don't try to hold any secrets. If I know it, you're gonna know it. Uh, nice. If it's somebody that explains it a little better than I do, uh, I will forward you links. Uh, I'm constantly anything about people that use my services in terms of uh, having me to instruct them. I will give you tools, even if you don't quite understand it from me. And I'm always open to answering questions. Now I can't say that I'm never busy. I'm always busy, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I'll always be responsive and make sure that I get that material out to people. Awesome. Okay, Sean, so why we you, have you? Um, go ahead. I just wanted to do a follow up question on that. Are your classes just some based on what you were saying? Are they one on one, or you have multiple students in your class? So I, I haven't been able to do a full class. Actually, I plan to do a full class in 2020, but uh, of course, COVID hit, and uh, I did get my refund from that place. And um, I, I do want to get into that. Uh, and of course, it'll be more discounted with with it being a group. And, you know, there may be a little bit of information to get from everybody. But one on ones, I feel, is, is more effective because you're getting people okay. right where they are. Like some people really, really master the cell phone who mm -hmm. really wants to know about using a DLSR. So, yeah, it, it just I, I rather do one on ones because I feel like people are more comfortable in that realm and you'll get the more you'll get more from me. OK, I have a second question. What editing software do you use for videography? Uh, I use Final Cut and I use uh, Premiere Pro. Uh, I will tell you, it's all um, I want to say it's uh, Everything that you use is basically based off of what you you feel comfortable with. Uh, but I use a little bit of everything. I'll use uh, DaVinci Resolve if I had to. Uh, I use Motion for uh, for graphic effects. I use After Effects for graphic effects. Uh, I use 
Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro. Uh, Premiere Pro is a yearly subscription, or you could go month to month. Uh, that's with Adobe. And then with Final Cut Pro, it's just a one-time payment when you have Mac, and it's 200 bucks. So I have a question. <laughs> Uh, what editing software do you use for like a photo shoot? So if I have a picture and I want to pull my person out of that photo and put it, say, in a poster, that's Miss Latoya. Okay, Miss Latoya. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we both oh. can answer. I want her to go. Oh. <laughs> I want her to go. I can, okay. I can tell he was passing the baton. I, I see. I see that. <laughs> and he knew the he knew what direction to point and everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> in our test in our test of uh, meeting, I, I I figured pointing this way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Latoya. Um. So if uh, if you are a an aspiring photographer, um, mm -hmm. you want to get very comfortable with um, Photoshop. Um, you're if you're just starting out, um, then you can get away with Lightroom. Um, but what Lightroom? Lightroom. Yes. Okay. Well, both are by Adobe as well. Um, and for both, you can have, um, a monthly or annual subscription as well. Um, but yes, uh, Photoshop is, um, it takes time to learn it. Uh, thank God for YouTube <laughs> and, and people who, uh, don't mind, uh, taking their time and showing you things. I mean, and that's ever learning too. Um, but if, if you're just someone who, uh, like for you, Angela, if you wanted, to, if you took a selfie and you wanted to uh, edit your photos a little bit better than what your your the what comes with your phone, the mm -hmm. default editing program that comes with your phone, then you can actually download um, Photoshop Express, and you'll learn mm -hmm. um, that there are different things that you can do in there that are that becomes industry standard for actually using the real program of Photoshop. So um, you'll learn to um, make sure your uh, color temperature is correct, your exposure is correct, your um, if you want to uh, reduce the, the noise, if it's too grainy, uh, if you want to get really, really tight up in those pores and get rid of those bumps and, wow. and bruises and if you know, our our skin tones, you know, are not naturally even. So if you want that right. nice finished look, that magazine look, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things are possible with Photoshop. And um, it's a learning process. So if you're just starting out, don't get frustrated. Just take your time, figure it out. But you YouTube know, would, it. And, and make it happen. Oh my gosh! Yes, I learned. A, I learned a lot from in school, and practice makes perfect. You know, so you basically you take something you want to focus on. Say, if you want to learn how to um, even up skin tone, you just just one step at a time. Follow what they're saying. I, I I used to do it all the time, and I still do it with certain things. You know, follow the steps of what they're saying. Pause the video. Make sure you do it right. Go back. Do it again. You know, until you practice get, made perfect. Right? Practice, practice makes perfect. perfect. And that's so where are the best. Yes. So we're um, rolling up on our hour. All so, right. Miss Latoya, can you yes. share with us how we can get in contact with you? Oh, absolutely. On oh, my new <laughs> website. <laughs> At LatoyaRenee.com, um, and that is L-A-T-O-Y-A-R-E-N-E-E.com. You know, I looked it up, and I was like, there are way too many Latoya Renees out here, so we got to get it straight. Right, right. Spell it <laughs> right. Spell it right. R-E-N-E-E, -E. and um, apparently um, there's some out there who also have um, artistic styles who... Um, uh -huh you know, have their own businesses and whatnot. God bless them. Um, but if you want me, then that's where you would go. And I'm also on Instagram, uh, Latoya underscore Renee underscore photography. And on Facebook, Latoya dot Renee dot photography. Thank you <laughs> so, so much. I'm, I'm in there. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Sean, yep. tell us how to contact you, sir. Uh, I have three, wait, well, actually I have 
different ways that you could get in contact with, with me. One is through arttrendsllc.com. Uh, that's actually listed right here. Where is it? Right. 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 <laughs> so you can reach me through arttrendsllc.com and that's art trends with an s at the end of trends because you know sometimes people leave their s off yes. um you can find me on uh facebook as sean tarantine screenshot this right now because i look i, I ain't got nothing for you uh if you can't say the last name <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, if you type in Sean with the E at the end, I mean, I'll pop up and, you know, uh, you can find me that way. And on Instagram, you can find me at art underscore trends underscore LLC. Uh, those are three ways. Well, yeah, that's three ways you could uh, get in contact with me. Awesome. Well, thank you for the both of you for joining me on March 11th on the topic, Look at Me. Take a picture, work my angles. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've learned immensely from you both. Thank you again um, for sharing your information, for pouring out um, with all of us what photography and videography is. And definitely we will put your information out there. So if anyone has more questions or they wanna contact you for work, please do so. Reach out to Latoya Conward. Dot, I mean, I'm sorry, Latoya Renee dot com <laughs> okay. and Art Trends LLC dot com and all their other social media um, uh, venues to reach out to them. Thank you again so very much. No problem. Thank you. So next week on March 18th, we have wheels to walls. We're talking about street vendors to truck vendors to actually getting to your brick and mortar store. So join us again Thursday at six o'clock at Business Mindset with Shia Boss. Thank you so much for joining me. God bless. Hope to see you next time.